Studnik Aquatics here. I'm going to give you, I've had some, some subscribers that have been requesting me to do a, a tour of my cigar lounge. I like to refer to it as a smoking room, but it is, it is a little cigar lounge. Basically, this is supposed to be a bedroom. It is 10 foot by 10 foot, and it did not have these French doors in it. I added the French doors that go out into the backyard. Um, as you come in, there, like I said, the room is not very big. It is 10 foot by 10 foot, so it is small. Uh, the French doors did add a lot to this. And the trim I did in a mahogany um, so that I would have that mahogany color, which is, is kind of what you see when you look at Victorian style smoking rooms of days gone past. So this is my backyard. It is kind of nice having the French doors. I can occasionally open up the doors to air it out if I want to, which airs it out very fast. So anyway, we're just going to start in one corner here and then we'll work our way around. Um, on this wall here, basically, I picked these up at a used furniture store. These two little tables, two little chairs in this table. It's not real big, but this is leather on top of it. It's It has kind of a classic look to it. I think it, think it worked out real well. Um, down below, I just have a wicker basket to hold things, a few magazines, um, things like that. On the little table here, of course, coasters, ashtray, and I'm currently having a little bit of, of Knob Creek bur bourbon. I have my uh, pipe holder with the tobacco jar that I picked up at a, uh, well, pawn shop, actually. And this is what I carry my pipe in when I, when I do go someplace. And I did pick up the little lamp. So it's kind of a nice little table. It works very well. I have a Zycar cutter that I got from my daughter. They're guaranteed for life, so that should last me for the rest of my life. Uh, little cigar mints, I don't use them. I just kind of have them sitting there. So anyway, on this wall, this little shelf here, what I did was I picked these up, and these are various pipe tobaccos that I have. This is my favorite, Frog Morton on the Town. That is a very good pipe tobacco. If you haven't had it, try it. Captain Cool, and then we have Porter's Pride, Prince Albert. You have to have some of the original. Uh, Sharpshooter, Coyote, Hell's Gate, and Three Cherry. So I do have those. These here is what I score my cigars in. I keep track of which I've smoked and which ones I haven't. Um, on the wall here, I do have an article that came out about me, about my line of work. I work as a wildlife biologist, and this is my one-page article they did on me. Um, there's a small article here that shows when I got my 30-year service award. And over here on this shelf, just a, a few a few books on cigars and, and a couple other things. Some more pipe tobacco there, and some old velvet tins, and then just a couple of booklets on cigars and cigars and leisure. And this, this picture here my daughter found, this is pretty cool. During the war, the Dunhill Pipe Tobacco Factory basically got leveled. I mean, it was, it was in very bad shape. And rather than just going home and calling it quits, they set up little tables outside and they sell, they sold pipe tobacco and pipes to the soldiers. So that is, that's a really neat, neat picture. It just shows they just don't ever quit. Just keep Keep doing what you're doing and everything's going to work out. Um, this wall here, um, I do have a window. I did pull the blinds so that there wouldn't be so much glare on this window. And I have a 25-year and a 30-year service award up there. I have my diploma from University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I have a bachelor's degree in, in wildlife management. Um, another award that I received, a citation of achievement. And a little basket for gathering eggs out of my backyard. The curtain went really well. My daughter picked that out. Um, it really tied together. She also picked out the rug and did a wonderful job. It looks really good in here with that rug. It made a big difference. This particular wall here is a little bit bigger. Um, like I said, I put the French doors in and they turned out real well. I really, really like how they did turn out. I put this shelf up here and a lot of cigar boxes up there that are empty, of course. I do have a liquor cabinet down here with various types of bourbons. Um, I also have some vodkas and some, some other things, just, you know, just a typical liquor, liquor cabinet. And a couple of old cigar boxes that I, that I got from my dad. Um, these are the Sir Walter Raleigh tins. This is the, as far as I know, this is the first one they made. This is the second version. This is the third version, and it is full of pipe tobacco. And I do smoke a pipe once in a while. This works really good for, you know, kind of taking some of the smoke out of the room. Um, I leave it on most all the time and then just keep replacing this as it needed. This ashtray belonged to my grandmother and it's kind of hard to see, 
but there's a gentleman there with his hand behind that lady and then when you look at the back <laughs> he's got his hand up her dress so it's 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 an heirloom something that was passed down to me and I I want to keep it around forever because I'll pass it on to my kids someday because that was from my from my grandmother one thing I wanted to point out in this corner over here I have this crock and this is a 20 gallon crock it still has the wooden handles on it this is the crock that my granddad made beer in and he made beer all the time he always had beer that he made as long as I can remember and as long as my dad can remember and that is the actual crock that my dad my granddad made beer in so my grand my dad gave that to me recently I was very glad to get it so I think it goes very very well in here um, the other thing I have on this wall I do have a flush mount TV after work I come home I turn on the news pour two fingers of bourbon grab a cigar and, and relax um, this little thing here this is old this is antique and it is a match holder with matches and then you're supposed to strike on top is the way that works so anyway this shelf here uh, my mother gave me a couple of these pictures of of people who really enjoyed cigars and had a big impact on the industry um, of course the thermometer and a couple of service award things a flask and I did build this in the shop out of scrap wood you can lift this up and throw your labels in there and it's full so I, I just grabbed a fruit jar um, velvet can so anyway that is that wall here and this wall here is doesn't have as much on it I do have some boxes down there to keep the door blown shut I've been asked about what I use for a filtration system this is a Honeywell and it does have a carbon filter in it now every time you look at anything that removes tobacco smoke all the way from the expensive down to the cheap ones the key ingredient is a carbon filter that is what's removing the smoke so if you can come up with a filter that has a carbon filter built into it that you can remove and replace that's going to go a long ways to getting rid of of, of the cigar smoke or pipe smoke in your room um, this here was given to me by Reynold Brown uh, there's a really good story behind this I don't know if I'll take the time to do it he painted a lot of the uh, he painted Ten Commandments Ben Hur all of those he lived in the area where I live now had a stroke and he did this with the wrong hand that man was an artist and I met the man he gave this to me and he also signed it for me it's probably worth a lot of money but I, I don't care I'll never get rid of it. it it means something to me I did art shows for years on this wall over here picked up this rack I do walk with a cane I have a lot of foot problems and so I have a walking stick cane and and then of course there's my tripod um, this little thing <laughs> my grandpa gave that to me when I was a little kid and I'm gonna give it to my son I don't know why just just one of those things I think family heirlooms are very very important my dad picked up this sign up here I know it's not cigars it is cigarettes but it is an original it's not a remake that is an actual antique one and I thought well it goes pretty good in here and the last thing in this cigar lounge and my pride and joy is the walking humidor that I built this used to be a closet and it had a solid door on it because this was supposed to be a bedroom so I did do a nine part series on my channel on how I did this and if you have not seen it I suggest you know looking at it be sure and like subscribe this type of stuff and the humidification system just kicked on so it's a little bit loud right now so I'll try to speak up but this is the walk-in humidor that I put in that used to be a closet and it turned out very very well I have had it up and running for over a year now it's running absolutely perfect the cigars are just in perfect condition it has that, that smell of cedar to it it's not all cedar the floor is cedar the shelves are cedar the verticals and then the joints are cedar um, but if you have any questions on, on how this works I suggest watching the video first because most of the questions I get on my channel about this can be answered in that video series and so I did add more shelves to this as I went um, and I explained that on my channel too I have all those and the humidification system is designed specifically for cigar humidors that's the only kind you can use and there's a reason for that I do have a ribbon light in here LED so at night this just lights up so it's working very very well it's taken me a long time to stock it with all the cigars that I need to have in there the humidification system it's changed a little bit since we opened it but what we have is the temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity is 66.0 it dropped just a little bit because I opened the door and where I live there is basically no humidity our humidity is very seldom goes above 20 percent so I don't have a problem with if I open the door you know I left it open too long it doesn't take long before that humidity will start to start to drop but it'll go right back up within a matter of about two minutes 
Um, it works very, very well. They do recommend one of the problems they say with walk-in humidors in homes is that they don't get opened often enough. Those in cigar lounges, in retail places, the door gets opened and closed all the time and it gives it fresh air. It, it changes out the air. And in a house, a lot of times people just collect cigars and they only walk into it, you know, once a month. And I open this door every day before I go to work and I take two or three cigars with me to work. So this door does get opened all the time and that is pretty much does it for my little cigar lounge. So I just thought that maybe people would be interested in it. I, I, it doesn't take a lot of room. This room is only 10 foot by 10 foot and I turned it into a, in what I think is a really nice looking little Victorian style smoking room. Um, I will be adding little trinkets to it as time goes as I come across tobacco related antique type things and, and just keep adding more stuff to this. And this is nothing more than a closet and now it is a walk-in humidor. So these kind of things can be done. You just have to do a lot of research and make sure you're doing it exactly perfect because otherwise you're going to end up losing a lot of cigars and we, we nobody wants that. So anyway, that is my video of my little cigar lounge. And as always, keep smoking cigars.